B. Us. And... Burr, Welcome, burr, burr. everybody, to another fantastic Need a Bone discussion with the Need a Bone discussion crew. My name is Banner Sen, and joining me today, we have Joey Spicy Fries. Hello. And Count to Cow. What up? I rolled through like four names before I finally landed on Count to Cow. <laughs> <laughs> today, of course, we are talking about the Game Awards. The nominees have just been announced. We're going to give our predictions and some thoughts about these categories, the nominees themselves, and some other things surrounding the Game Awards, like announcements. We're going to give you our prediction for the last Smash Bros. character, because we are pretty sure it's going to be there. But let's get started. Who is crinkling the goddamn candy bar in the background? Dylan, you fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween was two weeks ago. Throw it away. <laughs> what? VR Game of the Year. The nominees are Asgard's Wrath, Blood and Truth, Beat Saber, No Man's Sky, and Trover Saves the Universe. That's the game by the Rick and Morty guys. Mm-hmm. Justin Roiland. What, uh, yes. Uh, Joey, what are your thoughts? VR game um, game. I'm stuck between two of these games that I would I, it's, For me, it's going to be either Beat Saber or Saves the Universe. Um, personally, I haven't played Beat Saber, but it looks like a lot of fun, and I want to get my hands on some point. Beat Saber is interesting because I'm pretty sure it was nominated last year for PC, and I think this is the PlayStation release? I'm not really sure. It's confusing. I know that Asgard's Wrath is extremely highly rated, and it was kind of like touted as like, this is like the definitive like killer app for VR. So I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if Asgard's Wrath took it. Okay, fair enough. Dylan, any any thoughts? Um, yes, I am too going to say Beat Saber because it reminds me of my childhood when I would play Guitar Hero. It kind of has a similar vibe where you have like notes or movements in this case that you have to hit. Um, I and I like. <laughs> okay. Um, I like the concept with VR. Um, so I'm gonna go with Beat Saber. Um, another shout out to Blood and Truth. It's a it's a PSVR exclusive, and it's a very like focused, like story based VR title. It's it's which is kind of a rare thing. Most VR titles are sort of like the Beat Saber, the Trover kind of style of games, where it's just kind of wacky and fun. Uh, this one's like a pretty pretty mature game, and No Man's Sky for you know really taking the time to really make sure that that VR version is up to snuff. Whereas you see something like uh, a Doom VR or a Fallout VR, which is just like Eh, hey, it's VR Fallout. We didn't really change right. the scale of anything. It'll make you sick. So yeah, uh, let's move on. Oh, we're okay. going to be tallying up all of our predictions. We're going to be doing a post, post-show post video as well, seeing who had the most predictions right and whatnot, see who wins. And of course, we will be having Team Needabones Game of the Year discussions as well, uh, coming probably closer towards the actual end of the year, maybe early january but for strategy game the nominees are age of wonders anno fire emblem total war three kingdoms tropico six and wargroove i will riot if fire emblem doesn't get this this is its <laughs> one nomination i don't know how this amazing game only has one nomination on this entire list this is its only nomination it needs to win this uh i'm gonna have to side with you on that one and i'm not just saying that don't know much about the other game but i would i would side with you on from what i've heard it's an amazing game i three agree because it would be a cool win for fire emblem a a game title that maybe hasn't got as much respect as it deserves i think that this is the like i think the the last like the fire emblem awakening was really the breakout hit for fire emblem which made it more of like a mainstream nintendo ip and then the mobile title that's raking in bucket loads of money has been yeah. really helping. But this is the one that's like, wow, no, Fire Emblem's like a top tier Nintendo franchise now. Like this is like it's a really good game. Um so yeah, it would be cool. It'd be cool if it wins this, but this is such like a this is such like a a minor category. This is one of those like they'll <laughs> announce it like after a commercial break, like, oh yeah, the winner of Strategy Game of the Year. It's just like this this should really it should have been a game of the year nominee. Yeah, wow. you, you make a good point. But we have a unanimous vote on it. Yep, strategy so. game of the year. 
Sports Racing Game of the Year, Crash Team Racing, Nitro Field, Dirt Rally, Soccer, Racing, Soccer. <laughs> crash Team Racing wins. <laughs> for yeah, being, Crash Team Racing. <laughs> for being not an iterative, like, game with a, with a year on it. I would like Crash Team Racing to win, but I'm going to go with FIFA 20 because that's just the one that I think is going to win. I... He, uh, he, uh, there's I a popular was, vote behind that. Well, uh, Dylan, are you aware how the voting works? I know there's some involvement it's, with it's 80, the... It's 80 media outlets across the world, um, not just America, although most of them are in America, that um, submit their votes based on the nominees, and then 10% of the vote is done through um, public public vote. So you know we we can all vote, and that'll count for about ten percent of the of the total results. So this is mostly based off of like more, quote unquote, professional media media critics. Well, I I mean, trust me, I want Crash to win. I just think FIFA probably will. <sighs> I would be well. Hang on, let's do uh, Joey. Do me a favor. Look up uh, the Game Awards twenty eighteen. Uh, sports game of the year and tell me which one wins sure and we will move on to the next category which is score and music one of the most divisive subjective categories you can have in an award show music nominees cadence of hyrule death stranding devil may cry 5 kingdom hearts 3 and sayonara wild hearts uh fifa 19 1218 there you go dylan you have the advantage here but what else were the what were the other nominees it was like dirt it was like dirt um another soccer game and a F, a formula 1 car game in 2018 or are you listening to this year's nominees oh i was listening this year my bad <laughs> <laughs> um I, the music thing i don't know if any of us are in a good position to tell you about the the other three games i played Cannons of Hyrule it's awesome the music is literally like a key element of the gameplay mm-hmm. and i feel like that's something really unique that that uh no other game really takes to heart so i'm gonna vote for cadence firewall i love kingdom Hearts 3 music i think it's great uh but i do think cadence firewall has like like when you think of music like this game is music i'm gonna go with kingdom hearts 3 okie dokie i back joey and go kingdom <sighs> hearts 3 okay i don't think kingdom hearts is gonna take how many awards this year just letting you guys know you Son of a bitch! I just, I'm just right, letting you know. I'm just hot take, hot I'm just, take. I'm just letting you know. It's my, it's, it's, it's up there for me, but I don't think uh, the 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 mass media consensus will say the same. Role playing okay. game of the year. We've got Disco Elysium, Final Fantasy 14, Shadowbringers, Kingdom Hearts 3, Monster Hunter World, Iceborne, and The Outer Worlds. Mm. I am gonna guess it's gonna be The Outer Worlds. I'm gonna go Kingdom Hearts three. <laughs> I I really don't think it's gonna take it. Um, I'm gonna go Outer Worlds as well. I think I think Outer Worlds has a lot of buzz around it, a lot of positive buzz buzz around it. Um, I think a lot of people have played the game, whereas with Kingdom Hearts three, I don't think a ton of meat games media people played it. I think they put specific people on it, and I don't think those players' voices will resonate as well as the people yelling for Outer Worlds. And I think because Outer Worlds is in Game of the Year contention, but I don't think it's like I think it's I think it's in the Game of the Year contention. It's a no, it's nominated, but I don't think it's going to win. So I think this is where it's going to get its award. Okay, that's my logic. Fair enough. Next category. Moving Perf- on to performance. Moving on to performance, we have Ashley Birch as Parvati for Outer Worlds. I don't. Worlds. Do we really? Do we really have an opinion? Oh, we, I have one. I have uh, a, on a performance. Huge opinion here. Okay, let's do it. We have Ashley Birch as Parvati from Outer Worlds. We have Courtney Hope as Jesse Faden from Control. Laura Bailey as Kat Diaz from Gears 5. Mads Mickelson in Death Stranding. Norman Reedus in Death Stranding. And Matthew Poretta in Control. Joey, what is your opinion? I'm going to go with Norman Reedus. (laughs) Norman Reedus. Yes. I would... I would think that that would be the wrong choice based on what I've seen from death stranding i'm going off of popularity from where he came from. yeah but with the game stuff it's 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 a different 
It's a different beast. Mm-hmm. I I think I, what's yours? Uh, I think Courtney Hope's gonna win it. I think that she is the standout character from that from their game, and it's a very very like intimate role that you have with the player. Okay. Versus, versus Mads Mikkelsen, which is kind of like a he's a celebrity kind of thing, and then I don't think Gears Five or Outer Worlds really are like amazing performances. I mean, they're probably yeah. I mean they're very, they're very good, and Laura Bailey's really good, but I don't think these are like as good as like this this star role that uh, Courtney Hope did with Control. Okay, Dylan, do you have an opinion? Uh, I'm gonna go with Keanu Reeves from Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> Sounds, sounds good. Best ongoing game. One of the the weird categories. Ah, uh, uh, yes. This one's especially weird. I'll read the first four nominees. We have Destiny 2, Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite, and Tom Glancy's Rainbow Six Siege. All games that came out last year. Or not last year. Uh, at least a year ago. And we have Apex Legends, which is a game that has not been out for a year yet. So I'm not really sure if it makes Fortnite sense. Fortnite came out longer than a year ago. That's what I'm saying. Like Apex okay, Legends okay, is gotcha. is a it's a weird game to have on here because it's not been out for more than a year. Still relatively new, yeah. So We're it's not like, new. yeah, so it's just weird for it to be an on, ongoing game. Okay. Well. And that being said, it might take the the nomination. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna go with Destiny Two. Cool. Dill. I'm gonna go with the underdog. Rainbow Six. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were gonna pick Fortnite. I was, I was looking for a hard Fortnite. Best no. narrative. We have a Plague's Tale: Innocence. We have Control, Death Stranding, Disco Elysium, and The Outer Worlds. I, uh, mm. I always scratch my head when it's a category that's mostly Game of the Year nominees. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've only played The Outer Worlds out of this. So. You can go with that. That's totally fine. I'll go Outer Worlds. <laughs> I think that gosh, I don't even know. I mean Death Stranding could take this one. Um but I also see Control maybe taking it cuz I don't know if enough people played Plague's Tale and Disco Elysium, but Disco Elysium is super highly rated. I'm going to go with Control. Okay. Dylan? All right. Um don't really have a solid opinion so i'm just gonna take a stab in the dark and say the outer worlds cool 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 cool. best multiplayer game we've got apex <laughs> legends borderlands 3 call of duty modern warfare tetris 99 and tom clancy's the division i want tetris 99 to win this and i'm guessing both of you two to do as well i do definitely yes tetris 99 i would that'd guys, be awesome you guys missed out on the halloween event um that came out recently freaking day uh you could play for a luigi's mansion it was so cool like it came full circle because back in brawl luigi's mansion stage had the tetris theme so now here he is (laughs) in tetris i never thought about that um and also tetris 99 one of the featured games at this year's need a bone games yes coming in a couple weeks mobile game of the year uh joey i'm gonna let you lead this category uh I'm okay. So here we have Call of Duty, Grindstone, Sayonara Wild Hearts, Sky, Children of the Light, and What the Golf. And the reason, I'm why, I'm played... letting... the reason why I'm letting you lead this category is because I haven't played any of these, and I know you've played Call of Duty. Is because what? I haven't led any. Of the... I haven't played any of these, and I know you played Call of Duty. I've played one. I've played Call of Duty Mobile. <laughs> I've heard of all of these games. I know. Sky is made by the same guys who did Journey. What the Golf is like a goofy, goofy mobile game. Grindstone here is very good, and I know Sayonara Hot Wild Hearts is like kind of like a like a, a cult critic hit. Right. Um, I'm gonna go with Grindstone. I guess I don't know. I'm gonna go with Sky. I mean, I would pick Call of Duty. It's all I've played, but it's it's just another one of those mobile. It's not. Yeah. Dylan. What the golf? Sure. <laughs> okay. What the golf indeed. Best independent game. This is a fun category. We got ah. Papa's You, Disco Elysium, Katana Zero, Outer Wilds. 
An oh. untitled goose game. Outer Wilds is not Outer Worlds, just to let you know. <laughs> you it's, the knock, it's, it's the knockoff version. <laughs> no, no, no. Outer Wilds, Outer Wilds came first. Oh, interesting. Although I think Outer Worlds was announced for, I don't know. Both I'm going to go with untitled goose game. It's complicated. Goose game would be interesting. I think that Outer Wilds... Well, no, Disco Elysium is probably more... Oh, they're all, these are all really good games. I'm going to go with Outer Wilds. Give that okay. game around. Because it's on Game Pass and I want to play it. So this will ah. make me play it. Dylan? This, yeah, is that... a tough, this is a tough decision. I'm going to go with the Untitled Goose Game. Right. Yeah, Goose Game! Games for Impact, a.k.a. the... <laughs> A, for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. We got Concrete Genie, a game about bullying. We got gr Gris, Gri, something like that. A game Gris. about depression. Kind Words, a game about sending nice thing, nice messages to everyone. Life is Strange 2. Uh, there's some political stuff about the game. I think there's some, there's some racial issues that it tackles. And Sea of Solitude, another game about depression. Um... I think maybe... I'm going to say Sea of Solitude. I think maybe Gree might win this? Because Life is Range 2 isn't even completely out yet. Mm. Dylan? Um, I'm going to pass on this one. I just don't know just anything pick, about... Pick, I don't know one game and I'm picking... Pick just one. Concrete, as a Concrete Genie. Alrighty. Game Direction. Awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. This category is bullshit. <laughs> four, <laughs> four out of the five of these games are Game of the Year nominees. It doesn't make any sense. Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and Outer Wilds. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw it to Outer Wilds again. I'm gonna throw it to control this time. Tell him. I'm gonna go um I'm gonna go oof, oof, oof. I don't know what I'm going. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <laughs> oof, 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 oof. That's three oofs. That's, that's three oofs. I'm picking for you. Resident Evil. No, I want control. Okay. Okay. Two for control. Got it. <laughs> fresh indie game presented by Boo! Subway. <laughs> Play fresh. We got Disco Elysium. Gree. Dead to Oh no, sorry. Uh, my friend, my friend Pedro. Outer Wilds. Slay the Spire. And Untitled Goose Game. I'm pretty sure Slay the Spire came out two years ago, and this is a port. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, but this is for a new independent studio releasing their first game. And I'm going to throw it to Disco Elysium. I don't know why. Sticking with Goose Game. Goose Game. Done? Um, I'm going to go with Mega Crit. Mega Crit's Slay the Spire? Mm. There you go. Yes. <laughs> And the moment you've all been waiting for, Fighting Game of the Year, a.k.a. Oh, yeah. we had three fighting games that came out and had to fill two more spaces. Dead or Alive 6, Jump Force, for <laughs> whatever reason, Mortal Kombat 11, Samurai Shodan, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, the three actual nominees. Now, Dead or Alive is a real fighting game, and I know it's like an actual thing, but I know people were not happy with it. So I can't imagine either of those two winning. It's definitely, I think it's definitely between Mortal Kombat and Smash Bros. Yeah, I'm torn between those two. I want to say Smash Bros. Um, just because I think it has a, like a bigger reach. But Mortal Kombat did do very well. It did. I, mm, I hate it. I'm going to go with Mortal Kombat. That's totally fine. You're totally <gasps> fine. Because Smash Bros. is going to win Game of the Year, baby. Dylan? Bold prediction, Smash Bros. wins fighting game and game of the year. Ooh. I mean, that's my prediction, too, so. <laughs> Family game of the year, a.k.a. Nintendo game of the year. Pretty much. We just mentioned we... three. Ring Fit Adventure. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Who's sponsoring this? Nintendo? Looks Ring like Fit it. Adventure, Super Mario Maker <laughs> 2, Smash Bros. Ultimate, and Yoshi's Crafted World, a game oh, that I don't really man. think should be up there. I think there's I... better games. I never World. played Crafted World. I think that um, off the top of my little head, I could tell you that Kingdom Hearts is probably better fit for here because of all the Disney characters. Anyway, True. and maybe Zoom Zoom Adventure. 
Luigi's yeah. Mansion 3 should win this. I agree. For Mansion sure. Mansion 3. Dylan? Uh, I'm going to go with Su- Super Mario Maker. Maker 2. Okay. The most family game ever. Featuring co-op? Question mark? All right. Now for the esports categories you've all been waiting for. A.K.A. Oh. Who won Dota? Who won League? Who won Overwatch League? Who won CSGO? These guys. Who are you picking, guys? I'm going to go with my San Francisco Shock. My was, uh, Pacific team. <laughs> Liquid. Go. Um, I'm going to go with... The shock. Sweet. Esports player. Now this is one that I want to point out. There's a there's an interesting omission for this because I would have thought thinking about esports player, I was like, it would be such a statement to have Blitz Chung on this list of of esports player of the year. Mm-hmm. I think that would have been crazy because it says the esports player judged to be the most outstanding for performance and conduct conduct in 2019 and i don't think any player shows more better conduct than promoting freedom on their platform and risking their entire career than blitz chung so the fact that blitz chung is not on this thing says a lot about who's running the show here Mm -hmm. so i just want to i just want to point that out so my nominee goes to blitz chung (laughs) i'm gonna go with faker Done. Um, I'm gonna go with Phase Jarvis, <laughs> <laughs> the kid that got banned from Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> he cheated. He cheated. Do you do you actually know the story behind that though? Yeah, he was like showing off mods, and then he got banned, and then he was crying, and then he ninja, made, nin- he made and then a ninja, separate. Ninja said, he made a separate. Okay. He made a separate account. And he explicitly said, guys, I'm exposing this, not so people can do it, so that there can be like more recognition of this problem. And he got banned because, for cheating. Yeah, deserved it. No. Yep, hundred percent. You cheated. Like what do you what do you like you're you're exposing the cheating. No, you're not. You're you're, well, what, you're, well, you're what they you're, said one, is one, you're making it easier for people to see it. And two, you're not doing that to expose it, you're doing that for views. Well, we don't have to get into this. Let's continue the video. He's fucking deserved it. Like, I don't care. Boo hoo. <laughs> Boo hoo. Esports host. I don't know any of these guys. I'm going to go with Candice. Uh, I'm going to go with E E F. Her. On the left. I think that's oh, F. Man. I'm going to say that's Effie. Effie. I'm gonna go with Alex Golden Boy Mendes. Yeah, I feel I felt like that. What? He, I saw him when I went to an Overwatch event. Oh, okay. This category, this category fucking sucks. I hate this category. Esports game, e-sports of, the game year. of the year. I swear to God, this is the same exact list as last year. And you know who's gonna win? I don't know who's gonna win. I mean, I think Fortnite won last year. Probably will again. I don't know. I mean, they could just, they might just, they pay like, oh, we picked Fortnite last year. Let's go with someone else. Like, it does, this, this category doesn't matter. It's all about money. <laughs> like, Pretty much. Here's, here's the thing Smash Ultimate was the, has become the best selling fighting game of all time in less than a year. It was the number one, it was the, it was the, the, the closing game of Evo, which is the biggest game of Evo. So it's the biggest fighting game of the year. And it's not on here. Like I don't like even like yeah like oh yeah not, not there's not as many viewers like in the whole thing but yeah that's still an event like do something do something interesting with this list it's just the same five people people do you want me to be honest with you what's holding what's holding them back let let's hear this let's hear this hot take from Dylan it's the online servers not specifically the online servers but just the whole online interface I feel like it's doesn't i don't think so because the fighting game community is is fair is pretty much a, a uh mostly local 
like locally grown is a locally grown scene cuz most fighting games have really bad net code so fighting games online is just a difficult thing in general even though smash bros is probably one of the worst it's not like a lot of the other fighting games are really bad too that's just my thought that's just my hot take like most 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 smash bros like play is done locally like through locals local tournaments and stuff like that right so is that like really i think it's by twitch i think it's by twitch views i think that's it i think that's that's the i mean that would make sense though like my point it would be yeah but like that shouldn't be what makes you the best game is by how much money no, 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 you're, no. Com- I'm not you're saying, company I'm not, I'm not saying that's the direct reason why but i guess we can use that as evidence towards your argument Oh, I see what you mean. But yeah, I, I'm just I'm just throwing this out to whoever's listening. Like, like this category just seems boring to me. That we have the same five games here, even though there's plenty of other games that are coming out that are, you know, showing something like Apex Legends. Why isn't that up here? Is there a big esports league behind that though? Yeah, it, it fell in, it fell in its place. It's definitely not as as it's it's definitely not as high as up uh, as these games. But I think it's like, and it's obviously it has a ton of room to like like a lot of growth that's needed for it but uh, you know it's a new game like fuck it let's change change things up anyway uh my vote goes to <laughs> counter-strike whatever i don't care overwatch overwatch cool esports events we've got the 2019 overwatch league grand finals we got evo 2019 we got the fortnite world cup we got iem kato katowice 2019 league of legends world championship the international 2019 which is looks like a csgo event <laughs> i don't know what any of these are well i mean um, I, I know what these are but I, what I, the i the iem yeah that's no no that's... the the international i guess that's Dota. i'm gonna say i'm gonna say fortnite world cup yeah they really took it to like a new level with that with that stadium yeah I yeah agree. fortnite world cup um, yeah i agree uh, esports coach of the year. Uh, honestly, I don't. <laughs> like, this... come on. Also, MK Leo should have been esports player of the year. Um, True. I'm gonna, um, I'm going with Grabs. Oh, I was gonna go Grabs. I like that name. Let's we'll talk about Grabs. We're going with Grabs. Uh, content creator of the year. Courage, Doctor Lupo, Ewok, Griff, Griffig. Shroud. And Shroud. I'm going to go with Shroud. I'm going to go with Ewok. I'm going to go with Courage. Alrighty, guys. We had a technical corruption issue with our recording, so we ended up getting the last bit of our recording cut out. But we are back again to finish off the list for you guys. Uh, we ended off on community support. We were talking about it a little bit. And I think uh, we're just going to roll through a couple of these categories real quick just to catch ourselves up. Um, what did you guys pick for community support? I think I picked Final Fantasy. I'm pretty sure I went with Destiny 2. Handela? I am going to go with... I forgot what I chose, but I'm going to go with Fortnite. Okay. I think you went with Rainbow Six last time, and we were both shocked you didn't go with Fortnite. That's not for a different category. Maybe. Maybe just for eSport in general. Alrighty. Audio design. We have Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Control, Death Stranding, Gears 5, Resident Evil 2, and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I picked... Resident Evil 2 for the gooey, gory mashup sounds that you hear in this game is incredible. Right. I think I went with Resident Evil as well. I went with Gears 5 for this one because of all the extra little gross sounds that we get from the game that I they, appreciate. They also do a great job. I think I think yeah, yeah. what puts Resident Evil over Gears 5, because as far as the games I've played, I've only played Gears and Resident Evil. Uh, and But for for Gears 5, I don't I feel like the audio design is great. Um, but for Resident Evil, the audio design is critical for the game. And that's just that that that's how I'm basing my vote on. Fair enough. Um art direction presented by Samsung QLED. We have Control, Death Stranding, Gree, Sarandar Wild Hearts, Sekiro, and A Link's Awakening. Joey, I believe you went with Link's Awakening on this one. I think I did, yeah. And you went with Sayonara. I did. I did go with Sayonara. And I'm also going to go with Legend of Zelda. I think you did that as well. 
I think we can all infer what he was going to say, even though he cut out. Mm -hmm. um, my other thing with Link's Awakening is that it's a very beautiful art design, and, and it's the most striking part about the game. But I feel like it's sort of like a facade for the game, and then but doesn't do anything further with it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm not too far into Zelda into into uh, Link's Awakening right now, so I can't say if it is. But if you think back to I would say, if you think back to A Link Between Worlds, they use the art design to kind of prop up the gameplay itself. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. But, you know, it's still, it's still an incredibly, like, unique and high-quality design. Action Abs adventure... Hmm? What done? I said absolutely. <laughs> Uh, action adventure game. We've got Borderlands 3, Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Link's Awakening, and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Gentlemen, your opinions on action adventure and what the hell defines action adventure? What does it, what does it define? Um, hmm. A nice little balance of some action and some adventure. I guess so. I guess there's like, you know, a game with combat but also exploration. Right. There's honestly so many games that you can put in that category, though. Right. Yeah, it's really... <clears throat> I, I mean... I'm going to go with Control. Control, okay. I went with RE2. Um, I think it's, you know, it's it's, it's an incredibly well-made game. Um, but I feel like this category... I mean, if you look at all all six of these games, they're all so different. Yeah. Like, it's not like... A, yeah. Like, maybe Control and RE2 are similar in some ways, but even then, it's like, like, none of these games are the same. Right. You got, like, Junk Food, Junk Food, just, like, Cooperative, Borderlands 3, you got Survival Horror, Resident Evil, you got this, like, like, mellow, just, like, walking simulator of Death Stranding, you know, the Dark Souls, like, bang your face against a wall, Sekiro, the adorable Link's Awakening... And the trippy X Files control, like none of these games are the same, are, should be in the no. same category together. Not at all. So, uh, I think that's just a limitation of games themselves being such a like a diverse medium. Dylan, what was your pick? Do we want to vote? Yeah, I pick RE two. Joey pick control. I'm going to go with Death Stranding. That's a good pick. Okay. Action Game of the Year. Again, another undefined category. <laughs> right? Mm. I think that the, this, this category was supposedly shooting if it has gunplay, but mm -hmm. Devil May Cry is here, so I guess it's just games that are focused primarily on action yeah. and no exploration, or very little. Which all six of these games I feel like fit in this category. We got two like, kind of like um, I'm gonna call it platinum style, even though only one of these are platinum games with Astral Train and Devil May Cry, and then your sort of classic shooter campaigns with COD, Gears, and Metro, and then right. Apex being like an entirely focused multiplayer shooter experience. Mm -hmm. Joe, your pick. I'm going to go out on a limb with Astral Chain. What does, it, what does it mean going out on a limb? I don't think it's going to win, but I'm going to pick it anyways. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Is, is that what that phrase actually means? Yeah. Let me let me, let me look that up. Going yeah. out on a limb means like you're, you're, you're like taking like a risk. Like you don't think it's going to happen, but you're, you're, you're going for it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, Astral Chain, I think is... <laughs> Where one is not joined or supported by anyone else. Thusly, I didn't figure you guys would join in on that. I think Astral Chain is number one or two. Or no, no, or like two or three on the Metacritic here uh, between these six games. I'd pick Astral okay. Chain if, if it wasn't for the fact that Devil May Cry deserves uh, an award. And they are pretty much the same genre. Hmm. Hmm. Dylan? I'm... Okay, so this is the way that I'm breaking this down. Um... I'm not very familiar with Astral Chain. I have seen it. Um, it's in the same vein as like Bayonetta. Yeah. 
Um, played Apex. Haven't played the new Call of Duty, but seen gameplay. Played Gears Five. Haven't played Devil's May Cry. Haven't played Metro's Exodus. Devil May Cry is, again is like you know Bayonetta style gameplay, and Metro yeah. is like a very focused, um, like shooter campaign with a lot of like but... stealth and, um. It's a very beautiful looking game too. With that being said, I'm going to go with Gears 5 because I think they really did a really great job on this last Gears game. I really like it. I think all the mechanics were great. I think the gameplay is fun. The combat is great. The sounds are great. It looks good. Everything is good. I'm going with Gears 5. I think they did enough new stuff in Gears 5 to make it kind of stand out from the sort of saturated like tar pool that something... that gears yeah. 4 was they brought something new to the table yeah mm-hmm. enough enough new i wouldn't I would, like not not enough to really make this like a new experience like it, it is another gears game but there's enough new to be like yeah no this was really cool and uh trevor and i are slowly still slowly making our way through it we actually did beat a level a couple days ago all righty that leads us to our final category game of the year let's talk about these six wonders we've got control Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and The Outer Worlds. And I believe I remember saying something about there are three games on this list that I do not believe should get Game of the Year, and three games on this list that I think stand above the other the other half. Mm-hmm. Control, should I think... We, should we all just say our vote at the same time? Sure, but after I do my little spiel. Right. This, this whole this whole podcast is just a front to get to allow me to talk about things into it <laughs> there to fill time you know that right control yeah. <laughs> uh i think control is the lowest rated game on this list as far as metacritic score and obviously that stuff doesn't matter but these are the people deciding the the votes so the people who are on metacritic are you know they have they have voting power in this so it's kind of important uh and control i feel like is has had a lot of technical issues uh, but being such a unique design game, I, th- I do believe it does warrant, warrant something, but I don't believe it is game of the year category. Outer Worlds, um, in a similar vein, not a lot of technical issues, but doesn't like, it doesn't redefine anything. Like, nothing will blow you away as far as like a certain gameplay elements. It's just a whole bunch of really good parts that come together to create a really good whole, but not necessarily the game of the year, if that makes sense. And Death Stranding, I feel, is just way too controversial. Like, there are people giving it 60s, there are people giving it 90s. I, I feel like the people giving them 90s would vote for it, and that might bring it up. But I feel like the people who are so like bored and annoyed with this game are probably be like, we are not putting that game as game of the year. No way. So I don't think Death Stranding can make it. That leaves us with Resident Evil 2, Sekiro, Super Smash Bros. Sekiro, everyone loves who played Sekiro says they really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, Dark Souls, you know, kind of different fundamentals, but still Dark Souls gameplay. Resident mm-hmm. Evil 2, because it's a remake, people may be hesitant to pick it. Maybe. So I'm, I'm not really sure. It's a great game, though. Um, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The game that has every character imaginable in it, still throwing out new characters and keeping itself relevant, revived fucking Banjo and Kazooie this year. It is such a special little celebration of video games that it almost feels like it should be game of the year for that. And the fact that all of its mechanics are solid, it's the most complete Smash Brothers game. There's just everything there. So, yeah. Uh, Do we want to say our picks? Yes. Before you say that, I actually really like that description you just gave. You're like, it's a celebration of all these games together. It's a celebration of video games. It's In a video game. It's video video game exception. Well, yeah, and even beyond the video game, just the hype cycle of it, you know, like, you know, leading up to character reveals and all that stuff and how much, like, you get your character reveal and then Sakurai does a deep dive on that character and he shows you exactly why this character deserves to be there, why this character deserves to be celebrated and the why the company itself deserves to be celebrated, which is crazy. There's or- definitely a lot of thought behind it. Like, he, he he's not just, like, he's he's very particular about who he wants and why and i appreciate that it's not just like yeah let's just throw in sora because he's cool no no let's like, let's no no let's do that please t- t- hey hey wait that. wait no no do that let's just throw in mickey and goofy assist trophies oh yeah <laughs> why not 
Oh um, my god, there could be so many awesome ults if Sora was in the game. Okay, our game of the year pick is... Super Smash, Super Brothers, Smash Brothers Ultimate. Woo! <laughs> we um, have a unanimous vote over here. Yes, we do. And one more thing I'd like to ask you. What do you guys think the last character for the Game Awards is going to be? Because we believe with 90% certainty that the final Smash Bros. character will be at the Game Awards. Who do we think it is? Most likely going to be another third party as the last four are. Most likely not going to be a, a dud of a character because this is the Game Awards and it is the last character. So we're thinking something they big. Gotta, they got a flex. Not a, not a filler Nintendo character. I'm going to go with Crash Bandicoot. Joey's going with Crash Bandicoot. Um, I think Crash Bandicoot's a really good pick because it just makes sense with all of the... I mean, the new Crash game just came out recently. There's a lot of hype around it. There's a lot of he's rumors a, about a Crash game being revealed at the Game Awards right now. Ooh, he's, very, very excited for that. I, I'd be willing to say Crash Bandicoot is like... He's had a revival the last few years. He's, he's, had, had, a, yeah, he's had, had a revival, great one. honestly. Ever since the Wii games, which I really liked, and I still have your copy, by the way. Um, <laughs> wait, <laughs> um, arguably, the, had, arguably the worst Crash games. <laughs> I enjoyed those, <laughs> dude. You could take over monsters. That was cool. That was fun. Oh goodness! Well then, Dylan. Like, well then, Dylan. Well then, Dylan. You'll have to. You'll have to throw out your throw your arguments into Crash Bandicoot rank a bone. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, because you and I are going to be on the same page there, buddy. You should join us for that. That'd be really fun. And Trevor should join all us right, for, that, I, for that, too. I actually have all the games, so I can do it. I mean, I have most of the games, so I can do that. Well, Anyways, we, we my game it. of the... My, my, or not game of the year. My, my character revealed... I'm not going to say Crash and take Joey's. I'm going to be... And say Sora. I'm going to go on a limb and say... They're just going to they're gonna say, no, guys, this is happening. Sora's in Smash. That's a great character pick, Joey, and as I have editing power, I can insert my voice clip into this before Dylan's and say that my pick, of course, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Fucking steal my character, bitch. Dude, bitch ass. I've had Crash from the beginning. I've had Sora from the beginning. Okay. Dude, I've been saying Sora too. Yeah, but it doesn't mean anything to you. All right, I'll pick a new character. <laughs> no, that's fine. I actually have a different, I, I have a different character that I can, that I can throw out there. This, Gino. this. Gino. I, Gino. Gino is like one of those characters that like, yes, he deserves to be in Smash Brothers, but I don't think he's the Game Awards reveal, because no one knows who Gino is. They should have done um, Sans at the reveal if they didn't put him as like the, the whatever me, you consider the that. Skin for me the skin. Have. Yeah, they should have done him as a full character and released him at the game. I, I guess so. I feel like it's it, like the way he's in now is enough for that character. Um, because he isn't, it isn't like, I mean, it's a pretty impactful game, but it is not like a franchise that like has yeah. like Smash Bros status, I guess, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that looking at the list of characters we have, we have a, we have a, um, Atlas Sega rep. We have a Square Enix rep. We have a rare Microsoft rep. We could have squirted out if you touch my computer's power button. He's like rubbing his face on the corner of my computer. Oh boy. <laughs> Speaking of Kingdom Hearts, my cat Riku for Smash. Oh goodness. Um We have a SNK with Terry Bogard. Uh I think that the last character is either gonna be a Namco Bandai character or a Capcom character. Just looking at the the, the list down here. Um I mean it could we could go with, you know, Bethesda Doom Guy or something on those lines, but either. Leon Kennedy from Resident Evil, a very relevant character pick, and a very, like, historical character, just in tons of, tons of different stuff. Or, Namco Bandai. Uh, but, what's his face from Tales of Symphonia? Um, Lloyd. <laughs> sure. Because Namco Bandai worked on the game, so they probably deserve another character besides fucking Pac-Man. Okay. Or what? Wait, no, they made Dark Souls. Didn't Dark Souls, the Dark Souls Knight, Solaire. There we go. That's my pick. Okay, that's Joe's pick. There we go. And those are our picks. Um, any any other thoughts? Do you think anything else is going to be revealed? I think a Crash Bandicoot game is very possible. 
My only other thought is I think we're going to see I think there's going to be a big announcement this year in regards to like consoles or maybe like v, new VR technology. Um I'm just I don't know exactly what it will be, but I'm just I'm just going to put out there there's going to be like a huge announcement on like some new maybe console or an improvement on some kind of console. That's going to be really legit that we're all going to be like, "Wow, that looks super cool." I do think that with my, where Microsoft and Sony are at with new consoles, they're like the only thing that they have left to do is their big reveal event, uh-huh. which I think will be in February. Um, because they both they both usually have like these like these like big press conference events where they show off the console and stuff like that, and I think they always want to do that on their own messaging. Um, a new VR system, what would that even? Who would even be making that? Because I know Valve right <clears throat> now is pushing the new Half Life VR game. On their on their on their VR platform, um, so I don't think that they would be pushing a new headset. So who do you think would be making something new? I have no idea. Facebook. That's the Oculus. <laughs> <coughs> That's the Oculus. But didn't mm. they buy that though? They didn't like create it. They bought they bought it after it was kind of established. Right, and they've been making new Oculus for the last like three years. Well, I'm not saying there has to be a new one. I'm just saying maybe maybe a company is going to come out and and just say that they have a better version or an improvement. Maybe, possibly, who knows? It's possible. We we will see. We will see. Okay, we'll see. There we go. Uh, maybe Amazon. Amazon has no skin in the game yet, and they said that they're going to be doing a uh, a Google Stadia esque streaming platform. Soon. Wait, I know who's going to actually do it. Tesla. <laughs> Bruh, I, Imagine the Tesla I still heads. my prediction of of Skyrim on Tesla still stands. <laughs> that would be pretty sweet. It's the last platform. Um, don't, for, don't forget to watch our follow up video that we're going to be doing, where we're going to be reviewing the actual winners compared to our predictions. Then correct. We'll choose the winner of who made the most correct guesses out of this. Wait, wait Joey, yeah. did you have any other pre- uh, predictions for the game awards? Best John Wick game of the century. John, Not John Wick. Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Sorry. I mean, that's what that's 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 to entice people to watch our other video. You don't need to reveal maybe, that here. Maybe Keanu Reeves should just have his own awards category. I'm, I'm kidding. Sorry. Maybe he should. He should have his own award. He should be a presenter. We should. Maybe, we should you know, I predict Keanu Reeves will be a presenter at this year's Game Awards. We should do a Keanu Reeves rank above. He will. I'm willing to bet he'll be. He has to be presenting. Why does he have to be? Because he's Keanu Reeves. That's true. Yeah, you are. That is true. Because promoting, he's breathtaking. You're going to doubt the Reeves? Promoting his new uh, cameo in the SpongeBob movie. Yeah. <laughs> Alongside David Hasselhoff. And video game. All righty, guys. We got a few things to plug before we end it off today. Uh, coming out tomorrow, Sunday, uh, Sunday the 24th. We have a new episode of Rank a Bone where Joey and I yeah. review Sonic Advance 2 and I rant about the controls. Yes. Then, later this week, we got Thanksgiving, so we're barely going to be doing anything. Uh, but we will have another episode of Rank a Bone next week with Sonic Heroes. That's going to be fun. Uh, and some sort of the Smash, fo- Bros. V- Smash Bros. The video. The following week. No, no, don't. Let me. I got this. I got this, buddy. You got. I'm getting excited over here. It's true. Uh, we probably will hopefully have a Smash Bros. video of us playing some matches and stuff, edited for your pleasure, so I've done this week. Uh, but that'll be it next week. Dylan, go ahead. Next week, we are going on a retreat, a uh, boys-only retreat. Well, I guess we're not boys. I guess we're men. I believe it's two weeks from now as well. I think yeah. you have just, you think... But that's two weeks. Next week, is th- next week is Thanksgiving. We're not doing much, but the following week... Is when we're going to Big Bear, and we're going to be doing the Nebone games. So, if you're interested in watching us play a bunch of different wacky interpretations of games, have a good time. Celebrity meme Ranging, maker, woo! Doing fun challenges and drunk challenges. Make sure to watch our videos. We would highly appreciate it. The we Great Amiibo Tournament. We have a lot of fun making them. We put a lot of work into this, so we hope you guys watch it and appreciate it. And don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed this. And if you want to just see our faces and our voices a little bit more, 
Why don't you just subscribe? The buttons are right there. It's free. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. You just have to simply click or tap with your finger. And let us do the rest of the work. Yeah, we'll do the rest of the work. All you do is just click on our videos, have a good <laughs> laugh. That's all. Just leave leave a nice comment. Tell Joe how nice he is. Even if you have to lie. Even if you have to lie. That could just be the meme. That could just be our, our group meme. It's always fun letting you guys just kind of do, do your own thing and see see where you guys go. Anyways. Anyways. And it ended up being something positive for me. Anyways, that's going to be it for us. Uh, join us uh, for our next episode. We have... Oh, uh, we'll have our... Uh, our The need of... What do we call it, Joey? The, a the need a bone need a bones best of the year awards coming early january we're gonna be doing movies tv shows games all that stuff uh so it'll be similar to the game of the awards who will take home the nabby aka <laughs> a spray painted white claw <laughs> <laughs> i've been we actually that's... Send, <laughs> let's send it to them as a meme we'll find like their fan page thing and we'll send them the nabby with like a written explanation in it <laughs> And make a video. <laughs> Please understand. I've been Banner SN. That's been Joey Spicy Fries. Hi, bye. And that's been Count to Cow. And we've been Team Needabones Discussion Crew bringing you our picks for 2019's Game of the Year Awards. Goodbye. Goodbye.